Hi guys, it's Faye and welcome back to the channel. So, I've been away for the last couple of weeks because I have been quite sick. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you can still hear it in my voice. I am feeling a lot better, so I'm back. <laughs> As the title suggests, I'm going to be talking about the basics on plotting, and this is the bare bones minimum basics. So this can work for anyone from pantsers all the way to plotters, depending on how much detail you want to put in, but these are these six questions that you need to answer really before starting your book. Now everyone knows them. We all learnt them in primary school. And that is who, what, where, when, why and how. So let's go through them. So you probably want to start first with what. What is your story? What is the idea that made you think, I'm going to write a book? This idea needs to be in a book. You need the basics of this. So you can have anything from just the genre to the first line. It just needs to have, you need an idea, <laughs> obviously. So for example, the what could be I'm gonna write a book about fairies. That could be it, that could be all I need to know. I mean, it's not all I need to know personally because I would class myself as a planter or a tweener, whatever you wanna call it. So somewhere between pantsers who, in the kindest way, make it up as they go along, which is honestly just impressive to me because I can't do that. And it's also in between plotters who need to know pretty much every detail before they can start writing. So just knowing that I need to write about I'm going to write a fairy book is not useful for me. <laughs> so if that's all you need, crack on. Honestly, for me, I would need to know, OK, I'm going to write a book about fairies, but it's going to be a portal fantasy though so it's not just about fairies it's about discovering fairies to be fair with the what that's probably more or less what i would need maybe i would need them like a big plot twist i'd need to know that ahead of time um otherwise i normally would work with knowing beginning middle and end point and i'd roll with it from there so we've got the what Next, I would focus on the who, because I personally write more character-driven stories. I think most people do. However, there are people who will put the characters into their story rather than have their story written by their characters. Both work absolutely fine. Don't think that you have to do one or the other. Um, this is how I would work. So I've got the what, the basic idea. Now I need the who so that the story can develop. So you might have who? Your main character, a girl called Emily. That's all you need to know? Cool. Probably would recommend knowing how old she is um, as your main character's age generally decide on your target market um and by that i mean whether you're writing children's middle grade ya so young adult new adult other adult so <laughs> from the stuff that i've looked into that's normally determined what bracket you would fit in there would determine by your characters your main character's age so for example the first book in the series that I'm working on, my main character is 17 in the first book, so therefore it falls into a young adult category. You'll find that a lot. Harry Potter, for example, the in the first book they're 12 years old, so technically the first three books I think are classed as middle grade, but because it's part of the series where they age up it was just put into the genre 
um, slash target market of young adult. Not that we need to go deeper into that. I can do a separate video if people want to know more about it or more about what I've um, learnt myself. But yeah, so who you'd probably want to know your main character's age to find out what kind of style you're writing for, or what your target audience would be. So say Emily. Emily is 14. She's 14 years old. So depending on then how you want to write will depend on whether that will be classed as middle grade or young adult. If that's all you need, that's all you need. I personally would need to know the characters around my main character so the main interactions that we would have so for example emily's 14 she's got to live with someone so emily's 14 she lives with her parents maybe she has siblings so she lives with her parents and siblings who are they what do her parents do are they around the house have they got a stay-at-home mom a stay-at-home dad is someone supervising the kids? Do they go to school? That kind of stuff I need to know. So I go quite deep into my character profiles because I, like I said, I write more character driven stories. Um, so I need to know my characters better than the overall plot of the book. The next one I'd normally do then is where. Where is your story set? So obviously we're talking about a fairy portal fantasy. So part of it will be set in this fairy world so I would then because I personally really like world building <laughs> I would probably spend quite a lot of time going through and <laughs> making the fairy world and you know having its own rules and politics own x y and z because I enjoy that not everyone does so <laughs> if all you need to know is that you have the fairy world and you also have where she lives with her parents um say she lives in the british countryside um cool maybe it has to be that she lives in the british countryside so that her house backs on to a forest which is where she finds the portal to the fairy world you know you're just kind of building on that so you're not going oh well it's exactly this part this exact location geo point it like i mean if you want to do that do it by all means but just a general idea of where you're setting. I would also put a note here, and I do this for the who as well. I like to use Pinterest <laughs> to get better picture in my mind, or even find the image from my mind into a picture, um, to then use it for descriptions later on in the writing. Because sometimes I personally know that I can miss out bits and bobs because I can see it in my mind. But when I write it down, not everything translates. So having a picture there as well, quite helpful. Then we have why. Why is the story happening? Why has little 14 year old Emily found a fairy world? So this is quite integral to the plot in stage because if you don't have the why, nothing else really matters the why is a start really <laughs> so why has she found this like i said maybe her house backs onto the forest she likes playing in the forest she trips and falls into a tree and her hand goes through it oh my god it's a fairy world that could be it why maybe but then why does she like to play in the forest so much why doesn't she like being at home? If you're basing it in this era, the 21st century, she probably has technology. And I don't know if anyone knows kids, but my little cousin is obsessed with her Kindle, with YouTube and playing video games. And she's seven. So <laughs> I think it will depend. So for me, for an example, Emily's 14. She lives with her parents and her siblings. Maybe she's from a big family and maybe she's a middle child. So we've got that classic middle child syndrome. Um, maybe she's like, maybe it's like cheaper by the dozen where she has so many siblings that they can get missed out. Like a home alone situation where they forgot Kevin. So maybe Emily feels 
invisible almost so she likes her own company better because her house is always too noisy so she goes and plays in the forest and plays make-believe more than staying at home and having to share the tv or x y and z with her siblings you know that's just a little bit more detail to give you the family dynamic as well so especially with a portal fantasy you kind of want the juxtaposition between the normal life and you know the fantasy world following on from that when when is the story set now i said for example it's set in the 21st century so there's technology so that's something that you might want to think about maybe maybe you're younger than i am and that's just a given obviously there's technology but i noticed whilst i was going through some of my edits in my first book that i haven't mentioned computers or mobile phones once i just didn't think about it because i didn't grow up with that i did have computers and phones by the time i was 17 so the same age as my main character um but yeah it's something that i didn't think of i was like magic Psh, don't need that but in hindsight for example there are clocks and I mentioned the time um, in the book <laughs> and I had a discussion with my uh, a little group of other authors about whether um, it would make more sense to use AM and PM in analogue time or to use 24 hour clock which I personally would default to. That will, <laughs> that will obviously fit into the when. What era are you writing in? It doesn't need to be exactly to the day, but if you're writing a historical romance, what era are you writing in? You might need to do some research on that era to know um, what kind of fashion they have, what kind of um, transport they have. If you've got transport, do they have running water? Do they have X, Y and Z that we take for granted nowadays? So when is quite important because it will kind of dictate the surroundings um i think personally for me as well obviously i didn't even think about it when i was writing my book um because i was just like well obviously they have phones did i mention that they have phones no so is it obvious no it's something to think about if you just want to go well it's in modern day cool do that maybe take a look around at what you've got <laughs> to then use that for your characters as well that's just a little hint based on what i've been doing and i'm gonna have to change in my edits and my rewrites so when is again not specifically to the day but at least an era um just to know the trends really i think along with that though as well when would also correlate with how long your book is and what i mean by that is what's the time span from the start of your book to the end and how are you explaining that like i am currently reading a book a flicker in the dark at the moment and it's set over a couple of months and that is differentiated by a break a page break and it says what month it is the month in the year i think the first month is may 2019 and then we go into june 2019 and july 2019 so it's telling me when it is and how long it's set across so it's something to just think about so the last thing to think about is how how does your character fall into this story so you can go into more detail there are um things like save the cat with the beats um the free act structure you'll have the how is normally your insight and incident um or over the plot point it's called in beats i personally don't use that um so your how is how is your character in this story with our example with little emily she's fed up of home because there's too many people hashtag relatable there's too many people there's too noisy there's never any sort of peace and quiet there um she has to share everything so she goes and plays in the forest behind the house, they live in a nice countryside, so it's not exactly um, an unsafe place to play. She's playing in the forest and she, I don't know, trips on a route 
uh, root that's out uh, just outside the ground she trips falls into this tree that her hand goes through because obviously she puts her hand when she falls her hand goes through it and it's a portal it's a portal to this fairy world she then decides to go through it or maybe she trips and straight ahead falls into it maybe she falls through the portal and thinks i've fallen i've hit my head and now i'm having these weird dreams about fairies so you can play the line of is this real what is this to find out in the end it was all a dream or <laughs> please don't do that we hate that or to find out oh actually it is real and now i can go play with the fairies literally not as in the innuendo saying that you're crazy um <laughs> You know there are options there she can trip and then make the decision to go in to investigate further that's character-based choices is your um protagonist are they going to be an active player in the story so are they making the decision to go through the portal or are they passive has this happened to them and then they're trying to figure out what is going on on that note, I will say that active characters are usually more preferred, but personally, a passive character who then becomes an active character, I quite like. So, for example, if you watched my video on the January book that I read, that was my favourite, Witch Sign, my, the main character, Steiner, he was a passive character to begin with, the situation i don't want to give any spoilers the situation happened to him but as he was put in that situation he then decided no i'm not just gonna let this happen i need to do something about it so he went from a passive character to an active character yeah these are things to probably look into a bit more in regards to writing craft um if you want, I can try and do a craft series, though I'm still learning myself. And I think actually most people are still learning. So everything I would say is just regurgitated from stuff that I'd heard other people say. Um, obviously, there's loads of videos on YouTube. There's loads of books to have a look about craft. But for the basics, plotting 101, you want the six questions answered probably before you start writing. You want who, what, when, where, why, and how. So if you have any other bits that I've missed or any comments, drop them down below. My socials will be in the description if you want to have a chat. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when I next post. Other than that, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh my god, I've fallen, I've hit in my head. Hitting. I've fallen and hit my head. <laughs> okay, that was not good grammar. I will ignore that.